things that are taking place when the reality is it's a lot of lies to deceive you what truth is. And see, what happened is we're in this war, and in this war, we're being blinded, and at night, excuse me, as believers, we have been so, we, we, we suffered post-traumatic stress so long to the point that when we have nightmares, we don't understand what they are. Because no one's teaching us about it. So when we lay down and we having these, these dreams, or we have these reoccurring dreams, or we have these dreams that seem like they're reoccurring, but then the end of the dream has the same more, has the same meaning, because the same at the end of the dream, it might be a different dream, but at the end of this particular dream, it winds you back up into that one dream, or at the at another dream, it's totally different, but then in the end, you still wind up in a basement. Or on an elevator, going down, knowing that if you get off that elevator, you're gonna die. But they tell us that what the devil can and can't do. So then we say, okay, well, if, God, if the devil can't kill me and the devil can't do this without God's permission, then I can get off the elevator and I won't die. And that's not true. See, because if we don't understand this thing, this war that we're in, we're going to wind up getting hurt. And see, the sad part about it is when a lot of people get hurt, they decide to join the other team. Because they feel that they they feel that God is not moving fast enough in their life because they don't realize who their chain of command is. See, when you understand who your chain of command in the army is, then you know who to go to when certain things happen on the field. Or you understand who to go to when certain issues aro arose in your life, or you need a new you might need a new arm, a new gun, or you need new pants, or you need a new bulletproof vest, or you need a new a uh, helmet, or you need something to help you in this battle. But yet we don't get taught. Who do we see? What do we do? Because nowadays, church has gotten so commercialized to the point that we have to go, some people go to other preachers in order to get an understanding, but yet they still stay under the covering of that preacher they can't reach. I get so many calls from different people of different, different ministries, and then they want to get a word, and I say, I don't work like that. I'm not a psychic. I said, the worst thing you ever want to hear is a word from me because I don't know what God is saying. And when God said it, do you really want to hear what God is saying? But the thing is, you can come to someone else to ask them whatever you're going through because you can't reach your pastor. Then I say, why don't you come and check us out, and I never can see you. You see, church has gotten so commercialized to the point that there are a lot of people who are dying, or people in church, people in the street, they come to the church and they can't get the need or get God to really move in their life. So they say that God stopped talking to me. In reality, God didn't stop talking to me. You just ignoring him. And see, and by us ignoring God, we ask the question, why God, you're not speaking to me. And then God probably, then at one point or some point in your life when you decide to say, okay, I surrender, you begin to say, why didn't you talk to me when I was talking to you? And he's like, well, you was ignoring me. Why should I talk to you? The worst thing you can do is try to talk to somebody that's not listening to you. You know, it's like talking to Jacob and you know that even though he said, okay, he's going to go do the opposite of what I just told him. You see, this thing is called warfare. Because in the warfare, there are so many satanic and demonic things taking place. People fail to realize in the war, World War I, World War II, and all the different wars that took place, that there were a lot of satanic things that took place that nobody either talked about or nobody even realized that took place. Because you're on somebody else's land, somebody else's uh, government, somebody else's deal. So in every country nationality, there are forms of witches and degrees of witches. So now that this curse is being placed upon you and your bloodline, and then you come back and you forget that you were in the you forgot that you were in the war long enough, and then all of a sudden you wonder why all hell is breaking loose, either in this nation or on your family, is because of the witches that got together and placed that curse. But yet, we're not having mass fasting taking place anymore. We're not having the all night prayer thing, and then when we do, it's always the small churches that are doing it. Because everyone wants to build these big cathedrals and these big monuments and these big things to honor themselves. And in the process of them doing this, so many people get killed on the wayside. And when they get killed or when they get hurt on the wayside, they decide to join the other, the other team. Because they feel that the devil loves them so much. But in reality, what happened is they've been brainwashed and deceived. So then in the end, they find out that they were they started off as prisoners of war, but yet they felt that they had better uh, 
better benefits on this side, so then they decide to stay on this side. You see, we got to understand that we're in a war right now. And in this war, there's so much justification taking place. The church allows so many different things to take place to the point that now the church is getting caught up in the political correctness of life. What you can say and what you can't say from the pulpit. How to address this and how to address that to the point that the homeless are staying homeless. The naked are staying naked. The hungry are going hungrier. But yet they can raise this big cathedral and go overseas and feed the hungry overseas, but they're not taking care of the hungry in the community. There are so many people that are hungry in Chicago, but all these big ministries have, have churches that are overseas and over abroad. But yet the funny part about these churches that are overseas and over, they, they, they preachers that's going overseas and over abroad, if you look at it, they, they bring preachers from overseas over here, and they're not, the, the, they're not little storefront preachers in their, their country. These are people who have got three, four hundred or a thousand members. So if they got three, four thousand members and they build in acres and acres of community in this in their in their city or in their country, then why do I need to bring American stuff over to them when they can actually collect a dollar from each member and be able to feed the community or feed their own city? When we can be over here building uh, different after school programs, we could be building all kinds of different things for our own community. Things to get the kids from out of the way from being brainwashed by the witchcraft and the sorcery that's taking place. But we're in a war right now and no one sees that. So they decide they want to play both sides like a child plays both parents. They'll ask one parent this and since that one parent won't give it to them, then they go ask the next parent. And if they'll keep going until one of them says yes. So then when they find out the one that's the weakest or the one that will say yes, that's the one they'll keep coming to. It'll be like with Jacob, he'll go, uh, can I have this? Say yes. He don't say, can I have this? And wait for your yes. Or he'll say something, he say, say yes. He don't give you enough time to say no or yes. He tells you to say yes. And that's how it is. We, 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 we play the sides and now that we see that the devil makes it look more better. We sit there, we sing his songs, we recite his songs, and we, 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 we dance to his songs. We, 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 we do all kinds of things to his music and, and, and to his television programs and, and, and to his gear to the point that we wear uh, satanic gear, wear the dragon, and, and not knowing what that means of that dragon. And that, that dragon, although it's a dragon, it's a spirit as well on, on my clothing. These different animals represent different spirits, that, but yet we wear these because it's fashionable. And that's what the person says. And as we begin to wonder why we're seeing things in the middle of the night, because we introduce these demonic beings into our house. It's like with vampires and Dracula. They can't come into, according to the mythological or their teaching is, that they can't come in without your permission, without you saying, come on in. You can come in. And that's how it happens. He comes in once you give him the, the, the ability to come in, or you, you, you walk him in. And once you walk them in now, you're wondering why the hell and the chaos is forming. Sometimes all we got to do is just say, everybody's welcome. And if everyone's welcome, then it's easy for him to come and go as he chooses. He come in and drop a little of this, drop a little of that. It's got to the point that nowadays you've got these people calling themselves, everybody wants to be a prophet. And now prophets are telling you to jump up and down, turn this way, do this, uh, uh, boil a couple of water and, 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 and just put it on a shelf and, and just begin to this to call down this and begin to do that, or I want you to wear this for a certain amount of time. I want you to say this. I want you to do that. And not knowing that, that not, that's not a prophet. That was a witch that came in or a soothsayer that came in. It was like that thing with Simon. People thought he was a famous preacher. They thought he was a mighty man of God because they were moved by this emotional spirit that was upon him. So they felt him when he walked around and when he came into the room and when he spoke because the spirit that was in him hovered. So because if we're not keyed in on God's spirit of who God is, then we're quick to indulge or entertain or embrace any satanic or demonic spirit. And then we wonder why we're sick or why we're suffering from the same thing that the pastor's suffering from. Or we're suffering from the same thing that one of the brothers in the, in the, that just joined the ministry or somebody that's been in the ministry a long time. We wonder why we're going through what we're going through.